there is so much talk in the health and wellness space these days of blocking the blue light at night and preserving our melatonin production. As I talked about earlier, you alluded to the fact that a night light isn't going to really do much when it comes to melatonin production, but let's get into light and, and blue light blocking glasses and, and people dimming the lights at night. I want to know, is there any value in any of this? It's complex. So, um, we discovered that there's a third photoreceptor system, light-sensitive system within the eye. There's the visual cells, the rods and the cones, and then there are these photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. So the retina, uh, there's, there's a layer of cells called the ganglion cells. Their axons form the optic nerve, and they send light-dark information into the brain. And of course, primarily, you know, most of that is vision. But one out of every hundred of those ganglion cells is directly sensitive to light using a photopigment called melanopsin or OPN4. And that uh, pigment is maximally sensitive to blue light. So that's where the whole blue light story has come uh, from. However, it's again, not straightforward. First of all, uh, although the peak of sensitivity is at, in the blue at 480 nanometers. It's a bell-shaped curve. And so it's not just sensitive to blue light. It's sensitive to a broad uh, a, a range of light. And if the light is bright enough, it doesn't matter much what the color or the wavelength is. Furthermore, um, we thought originally that the rods and cones had no role in the regulation of the clock. Uh, but now we know that they can modify the activity of those photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. So the spectral or color input into the circadian system is potentially very broad. We're trying to work out exactly how the rods and cones are interacting with those photosensitive ganglion cells. But the bottom line is, yes, they're maximally sensitive to light. But if the light is bright enough, it really doesn't matter what the color is. Um, and so that's another kind of a bit of a myth debunked. So why is light import- important? And why are, bl- are blue blocking glasses important? Well, they've been used in ophthalmology. And the argument there is blue light can increase age-related macular degeneration, one of these diseases of the eye. There's actually no good evidence that they they have any effect on the rate of age-related macular degeneration. There was a, a study out of New Zealand and Australia recently suggesting that there was no really solid data. Um, blue blocking light, if it's low, will reduce the effects of light um, on our alerting system. So those photosensitive retinal ganglion cells are not just circadian photoreceptors. They do a bunch of other stuff as well. They actually contribute to our ability to constrict our pupils, but they importantly also increase our levels of alertness. And our levels, levels of alertness, the light to increase alertness is, is probably we need less light to increase alertness. Eye alertness is more sensitive to light than the clock. The biological clock needs masses of light uh, to shift it. And so there's all this worry about using blue emitting light devices before you go to bed. And there was a, a big study published a few years ago now looking at um, ebooks, something like Kindle, on its maximum intensity. And it was shown that four hours of Kindle use immediately before bedtime on five consecutive nights delayed sleep onset and it was just statistically significant by 10 minutes so uh you know those sorts of device levels of of, of uh, levels of light are probably not that important but they might increase alertness and the problem with devices of course is that they will have a slight alerting effect on the brain but what they will do independently of light is alert the brain because of course of the content if you're using social media uh if you're if you're you're switching between you know news the or emails and a whole bunch of other stuff that's going to alert the brain and that will delay sleep onset so bottom line for most um devices they're probably not having much of an effect upon the clock the amount of light might increase levels of alertness a bit um, but what they will do, and where the data are the strongest, 
is to increase uh, the activities that we undertake will increase the alertness of the brain and therefore delay sleep onset. So we've got to tangle up, you know, disentangle alertness, shifting the clock, and and also the the alerting effect of those devices. Just because you're 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 playing with with all of these different things going on at the same time. Got ya. So when it comes to alertness, is alertness? You touched on the fact that it impacts how we fall asleep or the length of time yeah. to fall asleep. But has there been any research on how that impacts sleep after we've fallen asleep? Um, there's some evidence that if the lights are left on, that can also change um, our, our, our quality of sleep. Those data are just just emerging, in fact, um, quite interesting. So, yeah, if you fall asleep with the lights on, you're much more likely to wake up than if you fall asleep with the lights off. So lights are doing something um, whilst we're asleep. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's talk about in your life then, because you are knee deep in the science and you you know the ins and outs. I assume you're not somebody that's wearing blue light blocking glasses then, because you mentioned the the little bit of difference it might make when it comes to blue light and, and our internal clock. But talk about what you do at night then when it comes to light, what you're doing and why you're doing it. So it is. It does, does make sense. I mean, one of the ironies, of course, is what's what's the last thing that most of us do before we go to bed? We stand in the most brightly lit, lit room in the house, in the bathroom. We look into an illuminated mirror while we clean our teeth. And I've often wondered that it would make sense to have a bathroom mirror where there's a night setting and a day setting. So nice, bright, alerting light first thing in the morning, and then turn it to the night setting where there'd be lower levels of light, uh, less alerting, and therefore less likely to delay your sleep onset. Um, so minimize bright light exposure about 30 minutes before you go to bed. I think that would be the rule of thumb. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. So the shorthand for melatonin that you read all the time is that it's a sleep hormone, and it most emphatically is not. But what does caffeine do? Well, it blocks adenosine receptors within the brain. So it masks...